top programming languages extremely important if you are just diving in tech right now learning the right language could define whether you make it in tech or not and so that is why i want to go into the top programming languages for 2024 let's get into this so number one the most popular programming language in the world that's used by 60 percent of developers in the world today is php no i'm just joking it's not php no not even close it's actually javascript huh sorry no don't mean to hate on you php uh, uh, you got me but javascript is the number one programming language used in the world today which is no surprise for a lot of self-taught developers and i'd like to say that there's a lot of self-taught developers in the world today the first programming language that we all learn including myself is javascript right so javascript is here to stay but one thing to note is that javascript has actually seen a decrease since last year because last year 65% of developers in the world were using JavaScript, but now it's 60%. But why do you think? And I think the obvious reason is number one, JavaScript isn't everything. I mean, it is everything for our life, right? That's why we get paid so well in tech. But number two, AI is here, right? AI has been booming over the last year. A lot of companies, not even a lot, every single company you can think of is transitioning to AI or is using AI in some way, including myself, right? As a front-end developer, who's worked in tech for over seven years, I use AI on a daily basis. I use ChatGPT, of course, but now I try to build things with ChatGPT. I use something called AutoGPT. Not even just that, I'm using GitHub Copilot. I'm using all these AI tools. I'm using Warp for my terminal and the AI tools that Warp provides because AI just makes our lives so much easier. In results, the market is transitioning to an AI-focused market. Right. So if you are learning JavaScript, if you are a front end developer striving to be a front end developer, I do highly suggest just building a few things with AI just for fun, just to be safe, just to protect yourself. Now, how much do JavaScript developers actually make in tech? They make around $117,000 to $136,000 a year. And that's just the average salary, right? That's just the average salary. And that's if you're only doing JavaScript, right? That's only if you're doing JavaScript. And the low end is if you live in a low cost living area, high end, San Francisco. Now, to be honest, I know a lot of JavaScript developers who make much more than $130,000 a year. I'd say an average is like $150,000 to $200,000 a year. But again, that depends on the title. It depends on how much work you put into, get promoted and grow and move up the ladder in tech, right? So let's go to the second most popular programming language in tech today if javascript is number one and if ai is taking over what do you think number two is it's python so python is used by 54 percent of developers in the world today and to be honest i see that going up i can easily see that going up within the next couple of years it is growing in popularity but why ai i mean it's using web development too you can use python for backend as well there's data science, there's data engineering, but Python is very popular. I, I transitioned from, as a front-end developer, I worked in the data engineering space, the ETL, ELT space. So I, I like to say the data integration space, right? Where it's mainly Python and SQL, right? A lot of SQL, a lot of Python, and using the modern data stack today. And working in that space, I've seen how AI and Python is in so much demand. So when we talk about salaries, Python developers on average are making around 130 to $140,000 a year, but that's if you're only doing Python, but not even just that. Let's say you work with Python, you work with a lot of data, you like where you work with SQL, it was SQL, and then you learn machine learning, you transition to deep learning, you transition to computer vision, and you dive into even much more deeper skill set within that space. On average, a machine learning, deep learning engineer makes around 140 to $180,000 a year. I personally know someone, and this was two years ago, who was a, a self-taught machine learning, well, deep learning, well, machine learning engineer, yeah, but he was making $180,000 a year entry level. That's entry level. I didn't make $180,000 a year until five years into my career. So it is possible to make that much money. It is hard, but it's very possible. And if I had to start over today, and I'm just being honest, if I had to start over today, would I learn JavaScript first or Python? I'd probably learn Python, right? I, I love working in front end space, but because I want to future proof my career, if I'm already front end developer, I'm learning Python. Well, I already know Python and SQL, but now 
maybe slowly transitioning to the AI space or making sure that I keep up to date with these new technologies as AI is taking over, right? Number three, what is the third most popular programming language? They aren't really programming languages, what I'm about to talk about. They're more like markup languages, so which is obviously HTML and CSS. Now, HTML, CSS are markup languages. And HTML, CSS within themselves, by themselves, do not pay well. They don't. Let's say with HTML, CSS, you want to become an email developer, right? In Texas, an email developer makes $80,000 a year, while in San Francisco, $83,000 a year. When I was laid off during the pandemic, there was a job that wanted to take me in San Jose to be a developer, but primarily focused on emails. And I'm like, no, I don't want to take that job because if I took that job, I'd be stuck, to be honest. I knew that my job would be gone in a matter of years if I stayed there. And they were only offering $90,000 a year. When I say $90,000 a year, when I say only, that's because it's in San Francisco. After $90,000 a year, you're making like, what, $2,500 every two weeks, maybe $2,800? Rent alone is $3,500, bucks, right? And that's not enough to live. And so I didn't do that. But is HTML CSS bad? No. HTML CSS by itself does not pay well. But let's say you are you do HTML CSS and JavaScript and a little back end, you make much more money. So an average web developer in the US, let's say between Dallas and San Francisco, just averaging out these salaries, make between 130 dollars to $150,000 a year. So yes, only doing HTML CSS is easy. It can be easy, it's not, CSS is not easy at all. But if you use that with JavaScript, take time to learn an additional technology, you're making $150,000 a year. I think that's important to consider. It's not just learning one language. It's not just only HTML and CSS. It's not just JavaScript, but you learn these technologies together, right? So now let's go to number four. The fourth most popular language that's used by developers in today's world is SQL, which is used by 52% of developers in the world today. Now, SQL is so important. SQL is a query language. And if you're a developer, you will work with databases. Whether it's now or later, you will eventually because data is king. Data is why literally all these companies make so much freaking money. Learning SQL is essential as a developer. Now, SQL alone, it won't pay well, right? SQL alone will pay maybe, let's say nine. Well, I know people making 70K depending on the company you work for, but an average in Texas and San Francisco just averaging out between 98 to $100,000 a year. Doesn't pay much. When I say doesn't pay much, if you want to raise a family and buy your own house, you want to make more, right? So SQL within itself is very popular because everyone needs to use it to work with databases, with Postgres and, and uh, Postgres and MySQL, right? There's MongoDB, you name it, right? But just SQL alone doesn't pay that much. As a data analyst, they make around $100,000 a year. But let's say you also learn Python or SQL, wait, Python or SQL, not three, but Python and SQL together, as a data engineer, you make around $150,000 a year, right? So again, these languages are very popular, but maybe by themselves, not maybe, but by themselves, but they may not pay as well. But when you combine them with other technologies as a data engineer, with Python, SQL, and using and learning the modern data stack, you make much more money. Now, another thing I want to add on top of that, everyone, we live in this world of AI, like I said earlier, don't fall behind. And what I mean by this is if you are not using AI in your day-to-day -day tasks, your day-to-day -day life somehow as a developer or aspiring developer, you're falling behind. You don't want to fall behind. Everyone, including the biggest businesses in the world, are using AI to stay ahead of the competition. And if you're not using AI somehow, I use ChatGPT every day when I'm learning new languages as I'm learning new AI things, right? Use it every day. What I use every day is GitHub Copilot, ChatGPT. I use Warp Terminal, and I mentioned that earlier, and they're not a sponsor of this video, but I generally freaking love them. And I'll put the links in the description below. Not using AI to help you keep up and stay ahead of the game will only hurt you. So make sure you use that when learning how to code as well. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope y'all enjoyed that. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.